This is the very first military burial ground. Stephen uh, Carney is, is command historian at Arlington National Cemetery. He lives for American history, especially that of the U.S. military. And here is where it all began. This is the grave of Private William Christman, who was buried on May 13, 1864. The cemetery began when there was no burial space left in Washington, D.C. There were so many uh, wounded and sick soldiers coming into the hospitals in the D.C. area. It outgrew the capacity for cemeteries. The time was the mid-1800s, the end of the Civil War, a bloody period of American history when South fought against the North. It became a cemetery when, by 1864, the national cemeteries that had been established here were simply filled really beyond capacity. But right across the Potomac, you had 1,100 acres of essentially an untouched estate that was uh, suitable for a burial ground, and it was very close to the district to actually be able to get out here. So this was born out of necessity? It was definitely born out of necessity. And that, that necessity began really at the beginning of May of 1864, so our very first military burial here was May 13th, 1864. Now I've also read that Arlington had, is, was a reconciliation point between North and South in that time. So from the very beginning, there were Confederate soldiers buried here at the cemetery. But in 1900, the cemetery truly does become a symbol of reconciliation because Congress authorized the creation of a Confederate section. Today we call it Section 16. In the year 1900, a large amount of pedestrian traffic would have entered on the western side of the cemetery and have gone right past the Confederate section. In 1906, Congress authorized the creation of a Confederate memorial at that section. And the memorial itself, it's, it's called the New South. Definitely a powerful symbol here um, at, at Arlington National Cemetery. This is where I think a lot of military leaders chose to be buried with their men? When a lot of those leaders, a lot of the officers of the Civil War begin passing away, so many of them decide to be buried here with their troops. Section 1 of our cemetery today uh, really overlooks what we refer to as or what was called at the time the Field of the Dead. Today it's Section 13, but it became the primary burial ground for a majority of our Civil War dead. You see the same thing then coming into the 20th century. So General Pershing is buried in Section 34. He wanted a simple soldier's marker, and he wanted to be buried at a spot where he could overlook the men that he uh, led, the men who had served him so well during the First World War. Arlington also is known historically as where Memorial Day began. The commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, which was the veteran service organization of the Civil War. It was open to all veterans of the U.S. Army, Navy, Marines, and Revenue Cutter Service, which today would be the Coast Guard. And it was their commander-in-chief who issued a general order recognizing May 30th as Decoration Day. So that very first Decoration Day here at Arlington National Cemetery in 1868 was a tremendously popular event. Within a few years, there were over 25,000 individuals coming to decorate and to honor the 16,000 or so Civil War dead that were buried here. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, how did that begin? There wasn't a original plan to have a Tomb of the Unknown Soldier here at Arlington National Cemetery. Our Memorial Amphitheater was constructed between 1915 and 1920 because of the popularity of Memorial Day here at the cemetery. There was no plan to add a Tomb of the Unknown Soldier here, but in 1920, on Armistice Day, November 11th, the British and the French both um, start a Tomb of the Unknown Soldier or Tomb of the Unknown Warrior at Westminster Abbey to honor their World War I dead. So early in 1921, Congress authorizes the United States to also construct a tomb. It was decided Arlington National Cemetery was the most appropriate location. The tomb was an add-on to the original plan for the Memorial Amphitheater. And now you are marking the 150th year. Another piece of history. Absolutely. It's, it's an incredible, it's been an incredible 150 years and you know Arlington isn't just a place to come to um, honor the dead, but it, it's also a place for the living as well. 
And that's one of, one of the important things about the cemetery is the explore piece. I mean, it's, it's something that we think of every day, you know, how can we enrich, how can we enable our three and a half million or more tourists that come here every day to get out and to explore um, the history that is Arlington National Cemetery. There is just so much here. There's such a vast history. I really want people to take away an appreciation of just how many individuals served and sacrificed for our nation, not just the veterans, but their families as well. If you spend any amount of time at Arlington National Cemetery, you can't help but be touched by the traditions that are such a integral part of the fabric of the place. Hey, oh. Tradition at Arlington National Cemetery is synonymous with the Old Guard, the oldest active duty regiment in the Army, tracing its roots back to 1784. Tradition is one of the most important things that we have to carry on the legacy of the military. Command Sergeant Major James Bodecker says being a member of the Old Guard gives him a deeper perspective on service to the nation. You're a combat veteran of both Iraq and Afghanistan. You're now here in the National Cemetery. Does that make it more personal? Absolutely. I have friends fellow soldiers that I've served with that now lie to rest here. I still keep in contact with some of the family members. Um, so to be here and watch over them on a daily basis means a lot. Arlington is the premier national military cemetery, a final resting place for U.S. service members who've served the nation since the Civil War. Today, more than 400,000 veterans and their dependent family members are buried at the cemetery. From sunrise to sunset, 24-7, 365 days a year, roughly 1,500 soldiers of the 3rd Infantry Regiment. The Old Guard, here to pay homage as recognized presenters of honor, respect, and tribute to America's fallen. The millions of people that come to Arlington what do you see in their faces? I don't think that they exactly understand the magnitude and the size and the atmosphere that's here. So when they get here, I think it kind of almost overwhelms them at times. So as we now get ready to commemorate the 150th anniversary of Arlington National Cemetery, where do traditions fit into this? Every day. Traditions fit into everything we do every day here. From the President's salute battery, to the caisson, to the, to the funerals, to the firing parties, to Memorial Day. Flags in, flags out. It's everything. Do you think that once you leave here, your time served here at Arlington will leave a definitive stamp on you? Absolutely it will. Yes, it's changed the way I've thought about things. It's changed the way how I've seen families and their grieving processes. Taps means a lot. When we conduct funerals, it always brings me back to the memorial services that we conducted in Afghanistan and Iraq as command sergeant major responsible for those ceremonies. Whenever I hear those, it just it, it brings me back to all the soldiers that we've conducted memorial ceremonies for. I think it's all tied together with I see it as America paying respect to the service members. This is the place where when it's time for me to go, this is where I want to be. It's definitely that's its, uh, its impression on me. I walk these grounds every day and, and I look at the headstones and they speak to me. 
They talk about the service and sacrifice of generations of Americans. It speaks to our heritage. I know that there are true Americans and heroes buried at this nation. True heroes are interred here. Patrick Hallinan is Army National Military Cemetery's executive director. He says it's his calling, his mission. I'm moved by it. To me, they're physical symbols of the people that secured our liberty, defended our freedoms, and protect us to this very day. So when you walk through the cemetery, you see the people. And I mean, there are thousands of people that come here. You would look at people's faces and see emotions, reflections. On any given day, you know, we probably average three to four million tourists a year. And we have over 3,000 ceremonies from, from, uh, from the President of the United States and from dignitaries around the world that come and pay their respects and honor at Arlington National Cemetery. But the interactions, you're right. You see young, young, young children learning their history. You see uh, family members uh, coming to visit. And you see comrades coming back uh, to visit. And, you, and, and also, I, when, when you speak to the emotions, you know, I, I deal with the families who have lost loved ones in the recent conflict. So, yes. Uh, you know, just about every human emotion uh, is on display. This should be a place where people feel comfortable uh, to, to pay their respects and to grieve. Now I'm curious, I was reading your bio and it says that you literally started working with cemeteries in the field? When I uh, came home from uh, the Marine Corps and uh, returned to New York, took a position with the National Cemetery Administration at Calvinton National Cemetery in New York and started out as a basic laborer and figured it was going to be just a short time job until I finished my education and, and, and moved on to something else. But I was uh, captured by the mission and, and passionate about the mission. I saw it as a continuation of service to my comrades and, and also service to the nation on behalf of the nation. What is the size of Arlington National Cemetery today? Arlington is approximately 624 acres today. So how many military are buried here? There are over 400,000 military and their dependent family members. There's also a number of notable civilians buried here? Many notable uh, uh, civilians buried here. You have Chief Justices Thurgood Marshall, uh, Chief Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes is in, interred here, President JFK, President Taft's burial here, and, and, and his wife is interred here. Along with military generals, of course. You know, you have General Blackjack Pershing interred here, General uh, Jimmy Doolittle, General Omar Bradley's interred here. Just to get a perspective, how many national military cemeteries are there? There are many national military cemeteries. Arlington National Cemetery, the Soldier and Airman's Home, belongs to the Department of the Army. There are approximately 131 national cemeteries with the Department of Veterans Affairs National Cemetery Administration. There are also the overseas military cemeteries, uh, such as the one at Utah and Omaha Beach in Normandy, people are familiar with. Why is this one? the National Military Cemetery, the one that we know so well. When they started the original interment here, uh, many of the generals and officers wanted to be interred among the troops. It became a tradition. Renowned public citizens are, are interred here. It's built upon that foundation and that tradition. Also, the nation's first cast its eyes upon Arlington to recognize uh, what has become Memorial Day and also uh, to, to stop and pause and show its respect for those that serve. So it began here and has continued to this day. Now today we have eligibility requirements to be buried here. You have two types of burial here. You, ha you have in-ground uh, interment, which can be casketed or, or cremation, and then you also have column burial interment of cremations. In-ground burial is, is probably the most restricted. To qualify for in-ground burial, you would be active duty, uh, of course, retired, retired military, uh, retired reservists uh, re uh, receiving a, a pension, uh, all those discharges, of course, last period of service would have had to be honorable. And also those who received the Valor Award. So if you uh, are a recipient of the Medal of Honor, Distinguished Service Cross, Distinguished Service Medal, Silver Star, or the Purple Heart, you would be eligible for in-ground burial. If not, if you had served your country as I did for four years, received an honorable discharge, uh, you'd be eligible for an earnment in, in the column burial. Being the executive director mm -hmm. at what is a national treasure, 150 years being commemorated this year. That's an incredible responsibility. It's, it's a tremendous responsibility, but it's also um, one I'm honored by, and, and more importantly, humbled by. When I started out as that young man digging graves by hand, did I realize I'd wind up at this stage of life? Uh, no, far from it, but it's a passion of mine, and it, 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 it's led me on this journey. 
And uh, after 40 years of, of, of the journey, I've been privileged and honored uh, to be at Arlington. And I'm just a caretaker. I'm a steward of the mission. You walk the grounds and every tombstone still tells you a story. Uh, every, every headstone, when I read the information, I see the backgrounds of different religious denominations, the war periods, the, the time they served. Tells me about generations of service and sacrifice to the nation. I know being here that everyone here is someone's hero. If, if you come onto Arlington National Cemetery and these stones don't speak to you or you're not moved, uh, I'd be surprised. 304 Medal of Honor recipients here. There are four multiple Medal of Honor recipients in third year, so there are true heroes here. The public is invited to join in the commemoration of 150 years of Arlington National Cemetery. The anniversary will be marked with numerous events, beginning in mid-May and continuing through June. All are welcome to attend and learn more about these hallowed grounds.